Hi, I'm Megan Nielsen. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to be giving you a little bit of a tour of the new Elma Lotus. This is my mother-in-law's machine. She recently got back into sewing and this is the machine she chose for herself. I was really excited when she told me that because I actually own the original Elma Lotus from 1968. Obviously I wasn't around in 1968. This was my Omar's machine. She learned to sew on it. She gave it to my mum to learn to sew on, and then when I learned to sew, my mum gave it to me. So these machines are really special to me and hold a special place in my heart, and I'm really excited to show you what the new model is like and put it through its paces a bit. So the first thing I noticed about the new Elna Lotus is probably the first thing you notice as well, which is that it is quite a bit larger than the 1968 original Elna Lotus. Um, it also weighs in at almost 2 kilos more. Um, the original version is 6.2 kilos, whereas this one is um, 8.4. So actually no, sorry, that's 2.2 kilos more. Wow, math. So um, I don't think that's a huge problem. I still find it quite easy to pick up. I love the compact nature of this one, but I think this one is a little bit easier to use. It has some functions that I think are highly improved and you couldn't have gotten in such a compact model. Um, I'm going to stop talking about my baby. I'm going to put it away and we can have a look at this one another day. Okay, so one of the things that I really love about this machine is this integrated flap cover. It makes it really great for travel because it protects your machine and it's also the dust cover. I really love it and I kind of wish all machines had it. So the way to open it is you just pull this little lever and they really carefully open up. I love that. That's a huge improvement on the 1968 version as well because um, that one, when you open it, they just bang down. Whereas this one has a really clever design where it, it carefully lifts down. Um, you'll see inside, that's where the foot pedal and the power cable are stored. Um, the foot pedal is really cool. It is very compact, which I love. It also has this great retractable power cable, which makes it super easy to store. Again, this is an improvement on the original version, which um, is like a normal foot pedal and the cable is incredibly difficult to store. Um, I love that this one's compact and I really love this retractable um, cord. So, um, let's move the power cord out the way. So the next thing I really love about this machine is the integrated storage. Um, there's this great little drawer that um, holds some of your accessories. You can put some bobbins in there. It's got your um, seam ripper, your um, brush. This is actually the um, screwdriver to help you unscrew the needle plate. Um, and then, oopsie, go back in there. Um, and then there's also this top storage area which um, includes a whole lot more stuff. Okay, so now we are looking at the top of the machine. This is the second storage compartment. It holds all of the feet as well as needles. And it also has a little guide to which functions you'll use for which um, different uses. Now, one of the things about this machine, which I think is a fantastic improvement on the original version, is the fact that the flat covers are removable. So there's a but little button here. When you push it, you can take these off, effectively turning it into a free arm sewing machine. Um, I love this uh, as much as I love my original Elma Lotus. It is a bit frustrating to not have the free arm, so I think this is a huge improvement on the original design. So one of the things I'm really loving with this new machine is all of the functions. The new Elna Lotus has 18 functions, including automatic buttonholes. Um, the original Elna Lotus only has two functions, um, the zigzag and the straight stitch. Um, and it has a manual buttonhole that it can talk you through. Um, I'm a great believer in the fact that you can do anything with a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch. And I'm really grateful that I learnt on that machine. But this is fantastic. It's computerized. In order to change function, you just press the function that you want to use, which makes it really simple. And you can adjust the stitch length and all of the different things with these up-down arrows. Um, another thing that I really love is this um, automatic thread cutter. You just press it and that automatically 
cuts the thread. The other thing that is really great, and I'm not sure if you can see it from this angle, is the start stop button, which allows you to sew without using the foot pedal. My mother-in-law loves this because she has a cat that she loves very dearly, so she puts her machine up on the counter out of reach, doesn't put the foot pedal on the floor, and just uses the stop start button. She has sewn everything up on that counter, including some incredibly beautiful tailored blouses, so I think that start stop button has been put through its paces. Um, one of the really interesting things as well about this machine is that it has an integrated spool holder as well as the integrated bobbin um, case. Um, let me have, let show you what the spool holder looks like because it's really interesting. Instead of putting your spool on top of the machine as you usually would, it goes down in here. In order to release it, you just pull this little arm to the side and it pops up. How cool is that? When you have um, put your thread spool on here, you just push it down and pull the um, spool thread guide over the top again. Um, it's relatively simple to thread. You literally go through the guides and it shows you really clearly here. It took me two seconds to thread this machine and it was easy and ready to go. Okay guys, on to the fun part. Time to sew something. Um, so I've just pulled out some dark green um, linen, which I recently used for a dress I was making. I'm going to be using this with white thread so that you can see my stitches really clearly. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is put my fabric underneath the presser foot. I'm going to lower the presser foot. The lever is here under the machine, not on the left hand side like many machines have. It's here underneath. Um, and for the purposes of showing how the start stop button works, I'm going to be using that instead of the um, the foot, foot pedal. So I'm going to press start and as you can see it's relatively stable and it's very quiet. One of the things I really love about this machine is how quiet it is and the machine seems to stay very stable as it's sewing. It's not rocking about, it's staying where it is. Um, to raise the needle we push this button and if you want to use the automatic thread cutting function this is how it works. Okay, now we lift the foot, pull our fabric out, and as you can see, the thread has been pulled to the back of the fabric and cut shorter. So this is um, really going to be useful for a lot of people who are losing their snips. I tend to keep mine with me all the time, but if you're that kind of person, you might find this really useful. The one thing I don't like about this is that it really heavily relies on you back stitching. Um, if you are the kind of person who likes to knot all of your threads or tie them off at the end, you're going to struggle because the threads are really short. So let's try a different function. Okay, and now onto the zigzag. I'm just pressing zigzag and the start button. As you can see, it's still incredibly quiet. And stop. here is our zigzag stitch. I think this machine is really fantastic. I love the way it sews. It's very quiet, it's very stable, um, which are two things I'm always really passionate about with a sewing machine. So my mother-in-law has been telling me a lot about the automatic button function. She really loves it. So I figure let's try it out because buttons cause a lot of anxiety for people. Um, and any way you can make it simpler, is a good thing. So one of the great things about this um, automatic buttonhole foot is that you can actually place your button in here and it automatically calculates the length of your buttonhole for you. So now that we have my button in there, let's attach it to the machine. Okay, so I have my buttonhole foot Attached to the machine. Next we have to pull down the buttonhole lever. This is a really important step. Don't forget it. I'm going to put our fabric underneath, lower the lever and press start and then watch the magic. I know buttonholes um, cause a lot of panic for a lot of people and this this is one of the best automatic buttonhole functions I've seen. It's stable, it makes a beautiful buttonhole, and it's just absolutely idiot proof, which is fantastic.
And there are our buttonholes. Tell me that's not a good looking buttonhole. I'm really happy with that. And it honestly, it looks fantastic on the wrong side too. Look at that. So truly an automatic um, buttonhole. My mother-in-law swears by it. She says it's taken all of the anxiety out of sewing buttonholes for her. So after that, using it a few times myself, I could say I highly recommend it. And just for another look again, here are some of our test stitches. Hope that's focusing. So our zigzag and our straight stitch. For years, people have been asking me what machines I would recommend for beginners, and I'm so glad I finally got my hands on one to try it out. I think this machine is great for beginners to intermediate sewers because it makes everything easy and keeps your sewing simple and enjoyable. Everything that could possibly cause you a headache has been simplified. It will do almost everything for you except make you a cup of tea. My mother-in-law hasn't been sewing in 20 years, but she bought this machine and she was sewing again right away and absolutely loving it. If you're more intermediate and you're wanting to start doing more, you might find some things a little limiting. Personally, I really like to have a second spool pin so that I can use twin needles and double up my thread in the needle as needed. I really hope you enjoyed this review. If you'd like me to review any of my other machines or give you a tour of my 1968 Elna Lotus, please let me know in the comments. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you get my future updates. See you later.